Hi guys, welcome back to our channel, the number one place for people who love design, art and all things creative. I'm Jacqueline and I'm an interior architect and designer here at DNB. In today's video, I want to share with you guys some design hacks for small apartments. And specifically, I want to talk about one bedroom apartment design ideas and studio apartment design ideas because I find here on YouTube there's so many videos for average size houses, but not so many about tips for tiny homes. And I really just want to solely focus on you guys who have smaller living spaces and who are maybe not too sure on how to maximize on the space you currently have. And also most importantly, how to get a stylish finish that you love. I wish that I had a video like this when I lived in a small apartment because God knows I needed it. So if you want to see how to cleverly design a shoebox apartment, let's jump into the video. The first thing to realise when decorating for a small apartment is in order to make the space feel bigger than it actually is, we need to perfect the illusion of creating an expanded space. So how do we actually go about doing that? First off, I would definitely recommend to stick to a short lighting fixture on the ceiling. No more pendant lights. And I love pendant lights, but unfortunately in smaller spaces, they have the effect of dragging the ceiling down, which really shortens the floor to ceiling height. So you want to stay away from that and stick with recessed ceiling lights or choose a pendant light that doesn't dangle down into the room. Something that's flush with the roof will work the best. Secondly, I would say that you need to use lighter tones in your paint selection. And although I love using darker paint colors, they unfortunately immediately make your space seem smaller than it is. Just by simply painting the walls or even just a few, it can completely change the dynamic of the room. And of course, what we're trying to do is make the space bigger than it actually is, in which case I would stick with beige and white tones. But if you know that is not your thing, which I can completely understand if you're maybe going for something like this, if you do want these rich tones in your room, then the way I would incorporate them is to only apply the color onto one wall, ideally making it a focal point. Maybe on the side of the living room, say, that has the TV on it because you'll be facing that the most once you're sitting on the sofa, if that makes sense. And then to bring that color back into the scheme even more, I would include it in furniture, artwork, and decorations around your home. Which leads me on to my second tip, which is to ditch gallery walls and instead go for larger abstract pieces. <laughs> yeah, no more gallery walls, which kills me to say because I am someone who loves gallery walls. I love that. But if you pick a large art piece that draws colour inspiration from other decor and wall paint, it actually visually distracts the eye from how small your space actually is, which may seem completely ridiculous, but it works. If you're looking to make your space seem wider, then choose a wide painting. If you're looking to make your space seem taller, I would pick a triptych set of vertical paintings. And if you're just generally looking to expand your space, I would pick an oversized square painting. You get the idea. Unfortunately, I only think gallery walls look amazing when they're placed on really large spaces because then they break up that emptiness. And because they're clustered, they tend to create a cluttered look, which unfortunately makes a small space seem messy. And in small flat design, the key is to keep things minimal. The less clutter and rubbish you have lying around, of course your space is going to seem a lot bigger than it actually is. Now, I don't mean minimal like this, but I do mean just make sure that items are stored away properly out of sight. And remember, this isn't about keeping your space tidy in order to be clean, it's about making your space feel bigger than it is, airier, and also giving you proper circulation to walk around in. There is nothing worse than a claustrophobic interior. And also, I'm not saying don't have any decorations or ornaments, just have a few that are scattered around your space. Or maybe have one piece of furniture that combines something practical like books with interior decor as well. And I know people say to use lots of shelves to maximize on your small apartment space, but sometimes in a smaller apartment, say in the living room, the shelves can tow over your head while you're sitting on the sofa and they encroach on your living space then and actually shrink the room size even more so by doing that. But if you're hell bent on shelving storage, then what I would do is stay away from minimal shelving that let's face it, is pretty useless and go for a large TV wall instead. You can use it to put decorations on display, give your TV a home, and also hide away stuff in storage if you want to. So it's a great multi-use item. 
and usually they're pretty flat so they don't subtract from the room dimensions too much either. That leads me on to tip number four which is to have clever storage solutions. When you're buying a piece of furniture or decor from now on I want you to ask yourself does this piece have a secondary function or does it have room for storage? You cannot afford to buy an item that doesn't have either one of those two things because we don't waste room anymore. Things like this, an ottoman with storage can be used as a coffee table if you just put a cheap tray on top. I also really like to have bed frames with legs, which is actually also a really good feng shui practice so that you can store things under there. Or alternatively, you can get a bed that has drawers with storage spaces. IKEA, for example, have lots of different options for a cheap price. And if you want some more home decor ideas on a budget, I have a whole video on that. So I'll link it for you guys at the end, just in case you want to watch it. I also want to add that with more people working from home, especially in a one bedroom flat, I can imagine that it's really difficult. I used to do it and at the time I was using my desk as a dressing table as well so I would just rotate my makeup and laptop when I needed to. But yeah, just be inventive and make sure that each piece of furniture has a secondary use. If you don't have room for a permanent desk then I would consider a foldable table that you can pop open and use in the day and simply fold away at night time. I find that one of the best multifunctional furniture items is a sofa bed. These days there are actually a lot of really chic sofa beds to choose from and in lots of different styles too, which personally I think is a must if you have a small interior in case you want any family or friends to stay over. It just gives you that additional sleeping space which is really handy. Speaking of sleeping, let's talk about bedside tables. Now I can't speak for all countries but here in the UK a lot of places can't fit both tables either side of the bed. You can only have one. Yeah. Is crazy over here guys. Recently, I'm sure like a lot of you, I've been watching that Netflix show Marriage or Mortgage and a lot of the people on it say, oh this room is too small and I'm like, uh, have you seen a one bedroom flat in London love? Maybe I am a bit bitter about your walk-in closets and bedroom sizes in the States but if you have room for two bedside tables then great. If not though, just have one that has a cupboard or a drawer for even more storage as there's just no point to have one that's just for show. Even better if it has lots of electronic storage for your phone. Or alternatively, build in a floating bedside table as they take up the least amount of room. Another tip I have specifically for studio flats is to make sure that there's a sense of different spaces. You want to really separate those rooms. You want to establish different boundary lines with other spaces and the best way to do that is by using partitions. If you're renting then a simple movable screen is perfect. But if you own the property then I would absolutely get a glass partition built or my personal favourite wooden slats. These wall partitions are sleek ways of establishing distinctive areas within your home and it just makes everything feel less like one big space. One more way to maximise on your wall space is to buy furniture that goes vertically rather than horizontally. Don't buy wide furniture and instead go upwards. Use the wall space you have rather than getting a sideboard cabinet and just sticking a painting on the top. Really maximise on the height. Look for lots of tall cabinets shelving units, hooks, trolleys and drawers as a key. I also want to mention another tip or really just some words of wisdom which is how you perceive your space is ultimately how you're going to feel about it. Your mindset is everything and please do not buy into the idea that your space has to be ugly just because it's small and not a huge mansion. That's absolutely not true. Just because technically your space is small doesn't mean that therefore it will be unstylish and uninviting. You have all the inspiration online that can really help you to create that beautiful home interior. I hope that these tips really helped you out and I'd love to know which ones you'll be using for your apartments or even if I missed something feel free to comment more ideas down below. If you're new to our channel I just want to say welcome. On this channel we talk about interior design, architecture, illustration, content creation and graphic design so if any of that interests you make sure to subscribe to see videos just like this one. Leave me an apartment emoji down below to let me know that you guys enjoyed this video or learned something new and if you liked it then please give it a big thumbs up because by doing that you really really do help us channel. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope it helped you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!